So in this video, we take a look at how organizations might proceed when they want to implement circular business models. So in this slide, we have three companies and three different strategies. First, Xerox has a retained product ownership approach. So they offer leasing or rental of the product instead of selling them. So um, they, as a producer, stay responsive for the product at the end of the customer's use. So they are in charge when it comes to after sales uh, options and for uh, maintenance capabilities. Second, we have Bosch and Bosch has a product life extension, so a PLE and Bosch um, designs its products to last longer. So the durability is here a key lever when it comes to putting the brakes for circular economy. And it also opens secondary markets for used products since they still work as they are very durable. Third, we have Adidas and Adidas has a design for recycling approach. So it redesigns products and it uses reworked plastic waste in order um, to manufacture shoes and clothes. So three companies and three valuable approaches. When choosing a strategy or when moving towards a circular business model, an organization uh, might ask itself two central questions. So first, how easy is it to get my product back? So that's the first question. The second one is, how easy is it to recover value from my product? And depending on the answers on those two questions, a company might choose a different circular business model approach. Now let's have a look at the so-called circularity matrix. So when building this matrix, we have to ask ourselves the two central questions before we transform towards circularity. So I mentioned these two questions earlier. So the first question is, how easy can I get my product back? And the second question is, how easy can I retrieve value from my products? So besides these two questions, which you already know from the previous slide, there is one additional important question. And this one reads as follows. What is the embedded value of my product? So the value that can be economically recovered from the product once it was used and once we got it back. And we also have to consider when building this matrix that there are the three dominant non-exclusive strategies for creating a circular business model. These strategies are um, the RPO, so retaining product ownership, DFR, so design for recycling, and PLE, so the product life extension. We discussed these three dominant strategies a few slides before. So now let's have a look how we build up the matrix. So um, when we build up the matrix or the reason for building up the matrix is to help businesses decide which strategic option to use for creating a circular business model. So we have the Y axis with the central question, how to get access to the product. So how easy is it to get the products back? This can be easy or hard. And we have the X axis with the process. So with the central question, how easy I can retrieve value from my product. Again, this can be easy or hard. And the strategy then depends on the embedded value. So for example, in the pink box, um, it is very hard to get access to the product and it is very hard to retrieve value from the product. So for products with a low embedded value, for example, two strategies might be suitable, the DFR strategy and the RPO strategy. One example for such products are tires. For products with a high embedded value, such as, for example, wind turbines, um, we might choose the PLE strategy as a business. Music